everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet, and today I want to talk about the finale of Mad Men. It actually has been one of my favorite shows, and I was really sad to see it go. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I decided, you know what? How about doing a modern-day Betty Draper makeup look, and I'll just do a talk-through. I usually do, I think they call them like Get Chatty With Me videos. I usually to actually talk through most of my makeup tutorials, which any of you have watched me, you know I can get chatty, but I usually just talk about the makeup, so I decided that maybe I would try to infuse some of my Mad Men tidbits and observations from the finale and from just the whole season, all while doing this sort of, sort of a modern updated version of what I think Betty Draper would probably wear today. I will warn you there are some spoiler alerts in it, so if you have not seen the finale or the final few episodes, then don't watch this video until after you've watched that, because I do talk about a lot of things that happen in the finale and how the show ends. So if you want to see how I did the modern take on the Betty Draper makeup look, then just keep watching. <laughs> I'm not going to go in depth onto how I did my base makeup because I have a video coming up very soon on how I do my base makeup, so be sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. But I am going to mention a couple of the products that I did use. I used the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer, and I use this because A, it is perfect. It's beyond perfecting. I also feel like this is a foundation that Betty would have used because Betty was very obsessed with perfection. She wanted everything to be perfect. She wanted her life to be perfect, her family to be perfect. I feel like this particular foundation, which actually feels very light on the skin, but it actually is, it's full coverage and it's sort of a foundation and concealer in one. So it goes on really wonderfully and I, I feel like this is definitely a foundation that Betty would be using today. And I also feel like Betty would not shy away from high-end products. I think she would definitely go all out and the Hourglass Ambient Light Powders are amazing. I just absolutely love them. I actually have the shade Ethereal Light, which I feel like just gives you that beautiful inner glow. Now for my eyes, I'm going to start with my new favorite trick, which is my tape trick. Again, Betty was all about perfection, so if you want perfection and that sort of perfect no mess eyeshadows. We're gonna go kind of neutral on the eyes, not too crazy, but I still think Betty would be using every trick in the book to make her face perfect. I'm actually now using, instead of an eye primer, I'm using my Maybelline Color Tattoo in Creamy Beige, just as a neutral base to kind of start off my makeup. It's just a very neutral color because we're gonna go really neutral on the eyes. So I'm really sad that it's over, and I feel like for me, Mad Men, I mean, I've always been obsessed with vintage and you know throwback shows I like I love old Hollywood so you know the 60s look and feel and just that attitude of like everybody gets dressed up to go someplace that's what I've always loved about that show is just that that era when I don't know men wore suits and women wore you know they did their hair and makeup to like go to the grocery store and stuff and I've always just loved that kind of nostalgia. So next I'm actually going to go in with my Too Faced Natural Eyes palette and I'm going to go in with the shade Heaven, which is sort of this light shade here, and I'm just going to kind of go all over the lid. And I have to admit, like, I do identify with Betty in her perfectionist kind of, you know, striving for perfection and obviously, you know, her blonde hair. And I kind of feel like I'm like a Betty from like the neck up with the blonde hair and kind of that perfectionist mentality. But from like the neck down, I'm definitely a Joan. Like I definitely have more curves. And I can definitely identify a lot with Joan as well because I just feel like Joan has that men only see her as a sex symbol and women only see her as competition. And it's just so hard because she really can't it's almost like she can't bond with either side, so I actually was really rooting for Joan to kind of like win in the end, and I loved the way that they ended her story. I actually predicted that Joan would start her own ad agency with all the money she'd gotten, and then she would hire Peggy as her creative director. That was kind of my prediction, and that they would actually hire Ken to be their first client. Next, I'm going to go in with the shade Cashmere Bunny, and I'm just going to kind of define my crease. And when Joan had that first meeting with Ken, I was like, oh my god, this is what's happening. 
But then it kind of wasn't exactly that way. Like Ken was kind of almost hiring Joan. But then when she had the meeting with Peggy, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to happen. And like it was going to be Harris Olsen. And I was like, oh my God, this is what's happening. But then Peggy decided not to go. And at first I was disappointed. But then at the end when they showed Joan like in her office or her home office. And she said it was like Holloway Harris was her business because she wanted like a two name title for her business. I was like, oh, I'm so happy that things worked out for Joan. She always wanted to be the trophy wife, like kind of like taken care of by the rich guy. And I love that they like gave her everything that she thought she wanted in the rich guy that she was dating. And then she basically like chose to give it up for her career. Like I just, I loved the way they did that. Like they gave her everything she thought she wanted. And then she realized that it wasn't what she wanted anymore. And I just, oh, I absolutely love that. The ending for Betty, I just, oh my god. I, I almost can't even, like, talk about the ending for Betty. I'm gonna take off my tape now. It wasn't the, necessarily the final episode, but the second to last episode when Betty, like, basically found out that she had lung cancer. And I, I wasn't all that emotional during the show, which surprised me. Like, I, I, I usually get pretty emotional when I watch shows that I'm, like attached to. I'm actually going to go in with my Kat Von D tattoo liner because we have to give Betty a flick. Forget the hundred gun salute or whatever. We're giving Betty the two flick salute. Poor Betty. I mean, you know, I'm not that shocked that she ended up with lung cancer. Like, I kind of feel like that's the appropriate way to end that character, but I just, oh my god. And I didn't even realize, like, how sad I was about it until the next day I was actually talking about it to someone like after that episode aired when they announced it and I was like oh my god poor Betty but I just got like so attached to Betty that I just oh my god I was just I was so emotional about it and I kind of noticed it's interesting it seems like all of the women in Don Draper's life ended up dying like if you, all the significant women I mean he lost his mother when he was little and then we find out that, like, Rachel Mencken died of leukemia. And now Betty, who's, like, the mother of his children. Anna, who was the real Don Draper's wife. Who may have actually been the most significant woman to him in general. I mean, I'm doing my eye makeup now, so I can't really get emotional. But, oh my god, the letter that Betty left Sally. Oh my god. Just, like... Even thinking about it, like, I could just start crying right now. It was just, it was so emotional. Uh, another moment I cried in the final episode is, like, the relationship. I love the relationship between Peggy and Dawn. Like, I just, and I've actually been gabbing so much, I actually went way overboard with my eyeliner. So I'm actually going to touch that up with my little sort of, like, pointy Q-tip. I have to have a little bit on my tongue. It's just my face, so whatever. I just, I love the relationship between Dawn and Peggy. That kind of mentor-student, like, father-daughter, brother-sister relationship that they had. And, like, their last phone conversation, that had me bawling. I, I thought it was a great ending. And I also feel like a lot of the final episode was phone conversations, which I think is such a huge, like, sign of the times. We don't really have phone conversations anymore. I've never really been a fan of phone conversations, so I'm not really all that upset about it. Like, send me an email or a text any day. Oh my god, the Peggy Stan phone conversation when they're talking about how much they love each other. Like, I just... Oh my god. I just... I got so... And I remembered, like, how many times that they'd had phone conversations, and it didn't really occur to me until the final episode, like, how significant that was. I'm actually going to go in to... with my sort of liner brush in the shade Sex espresso, which is probably pretty appropriate for Don Draper, sex espresso, because he's a sex espresso character. I'm just going to go in and just sort of go under my lower lash line just to define it a little bit. Actually, my boyfriend had a prediction for the final episode, and I feel like he was close. If those of you that have watched the show know that there was that ad campaign. It was for a hotel. I think it was the hotel in Hawaii. And Dawn had the ad campaign. It's like a picture of like the sand and a suit and like footprints walking into the water. And everyone kept saying it was suicidal. And the fact that Dawn was like headed to California and headed to the ocean. My boyfriend totally thought that like it was going to end with Dawn's suit and like just him like walking into the ocean. And that was going to be the end. And I do think that would be, it would have been a super cool ending. Because it's like you wouldn't have known if he lived or died. And it would just kind of been like this implication. And I feel like he was close. Like Dawn was like on the ocean in the water and he's meditating. And so I'm going to go in and curl my eyelashes. And the fact that they ended with that like brilliant Coca-Cola ad where I feel like you can kind of take what you want from it but I think my boyfriend and I kind of decided that what we wanted it to mean was that Don basically this whole 
thing he was going through led to him having this epiphany and he created the most iconic Coca-Cola commercial of all time and that he's like back in New York as Don Draper. Glad they didn't bring back Megan. She was not my favorite character. I was not a fan of her. So I'm glad that that kind of like was gone. I did like Megan's mother and I kind of like the dynamic between her and Roger. So I think that was funny. I love that Pete and Trudy are, are back together. I'm actually using my Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara because it's my absolute favorite mascara. I don't, it doesn't have anything to do with Betty Draper or Mad Men, but it's just an amazing mascara. I'm so invested in the show and the characters. I find it so fascinating. I think because, I mean, I realize it's 2015, but I know in my life so many of the issues that they talk about, especially with women in the workplace. For the last 10 years I've been doing stand-up comedy and it's a very male-dominated field and I feel like a lot of the themes that they talk about as being like things that were going on in the 60s, some of it's still going on today and I do feel like women have come a very long way. I mean, it, it, things are different and they have changed, but I feel like in industries, you know, like something like stand-up comedy or, you know, where there's no, like, human resources department, there's no regulation, you know, of how, how men have to treat women. I, I always feel like when they, you know, imply, like Peggy implied one time in one of the final episodes, you know, that if Joan didn't dress the way that she did, and that's one of the themes that I always just found, like, Joan could dress like Peggy and she's still gonna get treated the way Joan gets treated. Like if a woman has curves and a woman has shape and she walks confidently and she puts herself together, I mean, I don't think Joan ever looked slutty. Like, she put herself together and looked classy. But because she has curves, I feel like people treat her differently. If a woman just happens to have curves and shape, it doesn't mean that she's trying to be a sex symbol, it just means that that's her shape. Sometimes male attention is not the goal, and sometimes you get it when you don't want it, and a lot of times you get it from people you don't want it from. I mean, I'm here to tell you in certain industries, like, women still have a long way to go. Break my eyelashes with this very dangerous looking but very effective metal comb. So I don't know, I would love to hear your thoughts on Mad Men, any part of the show, any part of the season, how you thought the ending should have gone. I thought it was really interesting on the show how Don came from nothing and he worked his way up to basically having the American dream. I mean, he was the American dream, working his way up in this in this world and then he had a daughter who basically had the, everything she could have ever wanted and was still unhappy. I'm actually using for blush, I'm using my Milani blush in Coral Cove because Betty was like in love with her corals and her bright colors. I'm loving Peggy and Stan together as a couple. I loved when they brought Stan on the show. I thought they were really good balance for each other. I'm loving that they ended up together. Actually, my boyfriend and I have kind of been suspecting that they would end up together. I'm like talking so much like about the show. Like I usually do talk through makeup tutorials where like I talk about my makeup, but I'm not usually like concentrating on something like important that I'm trying to talk about while I'm doing my makeup, so I'm kind of going a little overboard with everything. Like, I got some extra eyeliner here, and I got some extra blush, but all in the name of Mad Men, people. To finish off the Betty Draper makeup look, I know Betty was famous for, you know, her red lips, and I feel like as the show went on, as it got more into the 60s, a little bit farther away from the 50s in the beginning of the show, that Betty kind of experimented a lot with, like, corals, and reds that were a little bit more orangey. So I'm actually, because this is a modern Betty look, I'm gonna actually give her my Sephora Cream Lip Stain because this is a beautiful matte color and I feel like Betty would be totally into mattes now. This is in Mandarin Muse, which I've actually talked about in my orange lipsticks video. It's kind of like my new favorite lipstick. And again, I used to be afraid of oranges, which I'll link that video below and you can hear that whole story if you wanna hear about that. But I just thought that this kind of like a bright coral was just such an appropriate color. It's like modern, but it's a throwback to the 60s and it's a great Betty Draper color. Cause I feel like, you know, Betty had kind of a dark side to her, but she was always just so like bright and sunny with her blonde hair and her sort of like bright lip color that she wore like everywhere. And I just think like a bright pop of lip color is so appropriate as a tribute to such a tragic character. And here it is. This is my modern take on a Betty Draper makeup look. I paired this look with, I would say it's kind of a wavy lob. I did like a really quick easy lob tutorial, but if you want to see how I do kind of this more 
a little bit more polished look, which I think Betty would wear today. So if you want to see how I did this, then just give me a thumbs up and let me know and I will totally do a tutorial. I, I feel like it's it's kind of like the modern way of doing the sort of set wavy hair that Betty was famous for. And I also actually paired it with these earrings. They're from Forever 21 and I kind of feel like they're a way of throwing in a sort of Betty Draper pearl, but the pearls are on the back and it's got this kind of like blue crystal kind of look on the front. It's a bit more of a modern take on the traditional pearl earrings. And I also feel like the blue and the crystals is very appropriate because I feel like Betty was very into her sort of icy blues. It fit her character and it went so great with her skin tone. So again, just a modern take on a very traditional classic woman who was also very tragic. If you have any comments, questions, or if you just want to talk about how much you're going to miss Mad Men and any kind of topics, like we can totally have a Mad Men discussion group in the comment section below. So totally let me know. If you have any favorite looks that Betty or Joan or Dawn or anyone had over the season, then just totally leave them in the comment section too. Like I totally want to talk about it. You can actually get in touch with me on social media. That will be at Sarah Blodgett. I'll leave those links below. And if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed Mad Men or anything, please give me a thumbs up because I would really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for watching and hope you join me next time. If you happen to find yourself in a situation where you're an adult and you're in a dance recital for the first time, or maybe you're a teen and you want to get away from like kitty makeup and you want to get into a little bit more of a grown up, sophisticated dance recital makeup look, I've actually created one using mostly drugstore products, not all. There's a few little high end products that I just had to throw in here because. I couldn't not recommend them, but for the most part, these are actually drugstore products that I'll be using on my face. So if you want a great dance recital, stage makeup kind of makeup tutorial, then just keep watching.